first piece that we can find, uh, written by a female composer in 1985, called Atmospheres by Beth Mojo.
this uh, pedal instrument, and kind of like a piano, but the same pedal is used to make the metal bars sound longer. So the piece you'll hear um, is called Pill Town, the Pill Town, and it is the original track from um, Chick Corea's uh, album, um, my, Sp my Spanish Part, and recorded in 1976. And um, Chick Corea is a huge inspiration to me, and one of the reasons why I pursue music, and he's just such a legend and um, he'll be um, remembered. And yeah, yeah, so Chick Corea and Stanley Clark um, made this record. Um, it was just for piano and string bass. And so a few years ago, I arranged it, uh, the track, uh, to fit uh, this instrumentation. So some of the effects you want to hear may be kind of unique to uh, your ears. So hope you enjoy it.
everybody. This is about halfway in the program, and um, I had a thought back there while I was listening to them play that fabulous piece. Um, you, you're welcome to, if you guys want to wander this way so you can see us better, or move some chairs, or we're kind of set up in the nook, which is great acoustically, but maybe for some of you it's hard to see. So please feel free um, while we're playing, just, just stay out of the um, view of the cameras. Won't bother us if you want to come up to the edges here and watch a little bit. Um, and then I thought I'd, I'd take a moment while we're transitioning to talk real briefly, give you like a, a, a one a marimba 101 course real quick. So most of the instruments that we play, as you know, are marimbas, and we have three up here right now. Um, and there's a third one in the back. If you're, if you're further back, there's a third one here. That um, and these instruments, as Harry said, have wooden, wooden bars. So you guys can see here kind of a reddish colored wood. It's called rose wood. It's from Central America. It's a, it's a really hard wood, but it, it resonates really well. So it vibrates, which makes the pitch. And then um, after the concert, you're welcome to come check out the instruments. You can see where they tune the bars here and cut the, cut the plank of wood be a certain pitch, and that, that tunes it to um, the pitch they need. And then also the tubes under the bar are called resonators, and they're very important for the sound. They're about 50% of the sound. And they're also tuned to the pitch of the bar. So just like an organ type, the resonator is a certain length, and that, that corresponds with a, um, a certain hertz of vibration in the sound pitch. So uh, rosewood, resonators, the marimbas come apart and they go into about eight cases each. And then they go into our van, or our, our trailer, which is towed by a van. And uh, the mallets, we're using mallets to play them. There's all kinds of mallets, really soft to really hard mallets. Um, even rubber mallets, you'll, you, um, we're not doing anything with straight up rubber mallets. But uh, everything we're using is wrapped in yarn or cord, and then there's different kinds of um, materials for the core of the mallet, rubber and plastic, things like that. Let's see. So the marimba is a really young instrument for the classical music world. Uh, it's only got about 80 years or so of history on the classical music stage. But the marimba is like 2,000 or more years old. And it goes back to Africa, and 500 years ago, it made its way through slave trading to Central America. It became an important part of the traditional music of Costa Rica and Belize and Honduras. And then, actually, about 100 years ago, it made its way to Chicago, Illinois. It's very specific, I know, but um, uh, a couple or a few of Central American families that were Marimba families moved up there. And at that time, some percussion industry uh, titans, I guess you would call them, percussion industry businessmen, saw the instrument, heard the instrument, and took it on as a project for creating a version of it for the classical music world. So the instrument in Central America sounds different, they look different, because it's also very much a craft project or a family project craftsmanship in that uh, part of the world. So they're beautiful instruments. They sound amazing. I would encourage you to listen to some traditional Costa Rican marimba music. Um, but the instrument has now made its way um, into the classical music scene of the entire world. And uh, we we're actually in a very interesting place in its history where we, have, we don't have a lot of music. And a lot of the, a lot of the famous original soloists and performers and composers are still alive for this instrument. Which you can't say that about piano. You can't say that about any string instrument. So it's really special, um, and it's kind of it's just so interesting to be a part of that. And, and you guys are a part of that as well because that's what we do at Heartland Marimba. We are creating more, more of an awareness about the art form. So. Okay, and I'm, I'm happy to answer any more, we're happy to answer any more questions afterwards. 
So hopefully that gives you a little uh, briefing on um, the art form a little bit. Okay, so let's move on with the next piece. Hi everyone. Uh, I'll keep it brief so we can get back to the music. The next piece we're going to play for you is Gregory Jackson's Marimba Quartet Number no. One, the third movement. Um, Gregory Jackson is a very prolific composer, percussionist, and conductor, orchestral conductor. Um, he's written tons of pieces for a lot of different instrumentation groups. Um, obviously, this one for Marimba Quartet. Um, this piece is fast and furious, and you'll see a lot of lines going between the different marimbas back and forth, and um, should be a lot of fun, and we hope you guys enjoy it.
Okay, thank you everybody. We have a few more shorter selections. The next piece is called, let's see if I get this right. So the next piece is from a quartet called Strange Animals in a Dark Pool. And the movement we're doing is called A Magical Octopus Rolled Her Venomous Eye. So I think that's right. That's all right. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, this piece is by a good friend of mine, David Colson, who is a composer, prolific composer at Western Michigan University. I just came from, uh, what town is that? Kalamazoo, Michigan, or Western Michigan, is, uh, a few days ago recording, so I could record his Miranda solo called Ghost Music. So David and I uh, have a, a really great uh, friendship and collaboration going on. So before we jump into that, I wanted to just tell you briefly more about Heartland Marimba. You can always explore more about what we're doing at our website, heartlandmarimba.com. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email us at any point. Um, this is the Heartland Marimba Ensemble, as we said, and we also do a lot of other things. We publish music. Some of the pieces we're playing for you are published. We're eventually going to publish this quartet. And we have a, a marimba quartet, which is a, um, a, set, uh, a set group of artists that tours year-round. The Heartland Marimba Ensemble is, um, is young artists, uh, a young artist program that kind of has a, sometimes a rotating membership of artists. So we try to reach out as broadly as we can for the marimba art form. And we, we just love coming to cities like this, and of course I live in Iowa, so it's great to be back in Mason City, and um, let's see, what else, and if, if, you, if you like YouTube and things like that, you can find a lot of videos by Harvard Brim on online. Okay, and then, so we're going to do a magical octopus, next, and then after that we're going to play for our show finale, the Mendelssohn Prelude and Fugue, so it's two different shorter movements by Dennis Mendelssohn. It's a new arrangement for us. Mendelssohn wrote this for piano, but we're doing a big project where we're arranging a lot of these for Marimba Ensemble. So this is his first prelude and view from Opus 35. So again, and we'll, just, we'll just play right through those, but thank you all for being here with us, and feel free to come ask questions afterwards. Thank you. 